session of the Grant County Council, Wednesday, June the 12th, 2024. Uh, the prayer this evening will be led by Mr. Connor with the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Poling. If you would stand. I would invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to be together to do the people's work. We pray that our work will be pleasing in your sight first and foremost. We ask that you be with all of our law enforcement officers, first responders, military, here and abroad. Be with them, give them your hedge of protection. It's in your son's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. If you would, do the roll call, please. Scott? Here. Connor? Here. Six? Here. Perez? Present. Pauling? Here. Lemming? Mr. Lemming won't be here this evening. At the middle board? Here. We have a quorum. Next item on the agenda is the auditor's report. Um, you have your general fund and your health balances in front of you. You also were given, um, we completed our spring settlement, so you do have a copy of the Form 22 to show the distribution for the spring settlement. Are there any questions or comments regarding the auditor's report? Do you know what percent was collected? You also should have that sheet there too. Okay, I'm going through here. For, um, if I did it right, it's 59%. Oh yeah, I see that now. If there's no questions, we'll move on. You should have received uh, this evening, as well as electronically, the minutes for the regular session, May the 15th, 2024. Are there any corrections to the minutes? to the minutes, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Scott, a second from Mr. Poling to approve the Grant County Council regular session minutes May the 15th, 2024. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. I abstain. One abstention. The minutes still are approved. We'll move on to new business. I would like to add an item, item H, uh, attorney contract line item. Now the first item under new business is Grant County Sheriff Bill Garcia, additional appropriation within the Grant County General Fund, as well as a salary ordinance amendment, which would be the general fund as well. Good evening, Sheriff. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the council. Uh, thank you for uh, letting me come up here today. It seems like uh, every time I come up asking for something, hopefully one day I'll bring you guys something instead of always asking. But, uh, you know, we are here tonight. Uh, just a couple of things to start off with. As you well know, uh, the jail's been overcrowded for some time, and we've come up with a plan uh, that the council has agreed upon to move inmates. Uh, to other facilities. I can tell you this has allowed us to uh, raise the morale really uh, of our of our team members working in the jail. We've had less issues uh, because of that. Uh, today we have a total of 63 inmates that are at other facilities with our goal of getting 40 more out. The state recommends that you only be that your facility only around 80% full, and to, to meet that uh, recommendation, we'd have to get down to 220. If we do 40 more, that would get us down to 238. Our current population today is 278. 
Um, and uh, of course, we have 274 beds, but you'd be surprised how big of a difference it's made for us to, to get that population down. With that being said, obviously, with moving uh, inmates to other facilities, we are charged by the other facilities at, at a rate of $40 per day. Uh, on our initial request, we asked for $400,000 to, to, uh, to move the inmates. Uh, today, we're requesting another 350. I don't believe we'll, we'll spend all of that, but I don't have to come back to you guys again asking for more money. I think we'll be able to return uh, a big portion of that to you. Uh, but with moving the other 40 inmates, if we're able to do that, uh, that will put us at 100 and, 103 total inmates being uh, placed in another facility at $40 a day. Uh, so that's our request uh, for the council today we'll, that you approve it so that we can continue uh, with this project. Um, as you well know, the, the uh, overcrowding is always a big issue. Uh, it's the reason some other facilities have been sued. Uh, you know, I'm not pushing, and I was talking to some members that are here today. As a sheriff's office, we're not pushing or uh, for a new jail. That's not our intention at all. Our intention is just, we just push out information to the commissioners and to the council, uh, and you guys decide whether a new jail is going to be built or not. Uh, we work with whatever you give us. So if the council decides and the commissioners decide that we stay with what we have, uh, we'll make the best of it and continue programs like this. So we'll kind of give us a chance to gather ourselves, slow down, take a deep breath, uh, and, um, and continue moving forward without a lawsuit occurring. So uh, I think this is a good program uh, for us to do to make sure that we don't get sued by the federal government. And I think this will keep us from, from keep that from happening. So. I would request those funds to be appropriate. Uh, Sheriff, do you have a, uh, a uh, I don't want to say inmate amount, like number that you want to see, like say for, say we're going to be in the budget process coming up. Okay, we'd like to get down to, to the state recommended 220. What that does for us, it allows us to move people around. Um, you know, we have issues. One of the things people don't understand, there's certain inmates that can't be around other inmates, so you have to be, be able to move around. It also gives us an opportunity to classify inmates. Uh, before, when we were at 200 and, or 348, we weren't able to classify inmates, so we could have an individual that was in for a, for a theft uh, with a murder suspect. Uh, this will give us an opportunity to, to classify the inmates, and, and it also gives an opportunity to provide more programs up there uh, for the inmates to try to keep them from coming out. So we'd like to get to around the 220. If we get to about 238 with, the, with an additional 40, uh, that would be very helpful to us also. So, I mean, I'm, I guess the number I'm looking for is, okay, right now you're housed at 103, right? For, well, right now, 63, if we move to 40, it'd be okay. 103. Okay. And that gets down to 238, which I think would be a good number. To okay, have. so say we budget for the 103 for next year. Yes. Okay, and then you're, you get back to over the 279. Then what would be the, your next plan? Well, we would have to look at continuing to move people out to, to keep us at that number. Um, right now, what we're doing, what we're currently doing is it, uh, the first and last year we, we met with the uh, city court judges to where we're able to OR people. So people, nonviolent offenders that are arrested, we get them OR and get them out. Uh, we've worked with community corrections to get a couple people put on home detention instead of being in jail. Uh, so we'll continue to work those programs. We'll continue to contact the judges to keep those numbers low. Uh, since we started moving people out, we've gotten as low as 266. Uh, and then obviously we're, we're hovering right around 280s uh, right now with only the 63 being out. Uh, we did uh, contact the judges. And one of the things that we talked about is doing, and I know you and I discussed it, um, video court, uh, and they've all agreed to do that when they're able to. Obviously, there's some instances where the where they have to, the inmates have to come back for court, and so it's time that we'll come back and transport them back to court. Uh, but if we could get around, say around that 238 to 220 uh, number would be great for the jail. Um, as far as well, I'm sorry, well, if you got 130 people, forty dollars a day, that's four hundred twelve thousand. That's right. Right. Yes, sir. 
And whatever I gave you 400,000 and you want 350,000 more? To try to get us through the rest of the year. We'll probably give most of that back. Uh, we probably won't use it all. Uh, you're talking about at 103, uh, we're looking at, at the 63 we currently have is 78,120 per month to get them in another facility. At 103, it's gonna be 123,600 per month uh, to, to get them into another facility. Is the 80% recommendation a new recommendation from the state? Because I feel like getting down to that number is the first time I've ever heard any effort. No, 274 has always been yeah. that number. I don't know if that's new. I know it's been that way since I've been on for the last year and a half. That's what they advised us and recommended to us. Have you ever calculated how much it costs us per day to house an mm -hmm. inmate? You know, right now we are in a, the ISA and the Sheriff's Association has commissioned a study to do that. And what we've done is we've taken three, or they've taken three different facilities, different sizes to try to come up with a number. Because it's really hard to do. I mean, you can always calculate the salaries of your of the employees, but you also have electricity, you have uh, equipment or, or, or um, clothing. You just have so many other uh, items that you have to calculate into. Uh, that's why I think the ISA decided to take that upon themselves. Now the state, the, the odd thing about it is, the state only pays us $35 a day if we house one of their inmates, but they charge us $55 a day if they house one of ours. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why the ISA decided to take this project on because we we felt that uh, the state was charging us more than what they're giving us. So, and now the the facilities that we're currently going to, they're only charging forty dollars a day, and they normally do that out of courtesy to the other sheriffs because you never know when they're going to need, need assistance themselves. So, but because it's, in the juvenile realm, it's totally different. I mean, in juvenile, we're paying anywhere from. $100 a day to, we just got an email today, uh, one of the places we take them to, I think in in July, they're going up to $180 a day. Uh, so it's totally different for adults compared to juveniles. I mean, it's a costly thing. Um, you know, I think if you remember when I was here a couple months ago, uh, the options that uh, we felt we had um, to go by, uh, this was one of the options, along with obviously building the jail, fixing up the D home, uh, this or doing nothing. So, uh, in order to keep us from getting sued by the federal government, I think this is a, at least gives us an opportunity to kind of get our heads together and come up with a plan to, to see, to find a permanent solution for the problem. Okay. Any other questions from the members? How much is left in that line item? Currently, 370000 so another 375 is what we're talking? 350. 350 is what they're asking for. That gets us to what, 650? We're talking 100? You, you want, we want to get to 100 inmates? That we 103. So rough math at $40 a day, that's $4,000 a day. There's a little over 200 days left in the year, that's 800 grand. That's short. Mm -hmm. Unless my math is wrong, but I'm just doing rough math in my head. Right? Am I right? That's 800. Right. Well, we're currently still have 365. Okay. We currently still have 365 in the budget. And that's if we're able to find the 40 other locations um, or the 40 other beds for 40 other inmates. Because you have to remember also that other facilities won't take individuals that have mental issues. They won't take people who are sick. Uh, they take uh, our best and most health, healthy. And uh, we, we stay with the ones that are not as healthy, both physically and mentally. Goals 100, but may not get there. But we may not get there. I mean, we, we may not get there. And at the 278 to the 287 that we've been running, that's really made a world of a difference for our, for our team members working and really for the other inmates in there. Um, I think when we get to the budget process, we're gonna to have to come up with a number. Is it right. the 1.5 million for the whole year? 
what is what is the number and that's kind of what i was getting at i mean i know you want to keep the level down but there's only so many funds available and so we're looking at it from a different angle then okay how many can we afford to house out of the county right i guess that's why i'm looking at it i mean it just depends on how fast you get to the number if you're able to get to the number then you may get there I mean, we actually got to the 63 a lot quicker than what I thought we would. Okay. Because you have a lot of new jails that have been built recently that have a lot of uh, yeah. open bids. And luckily, these aren't too far away. Uh, these are relatively close ones in Tipton and in Fulton County. Um, Wabash County just opened up their jail. Uh, however, they're still getting used to the new jail and, and the new controls. So we haven't uh, requested any inmates go there yet. But we are looking at the Wabash County. I've talked to Sheriff Baker, and that's going to be a possibility for us to put a few inmates in there. Are there any other questions from the members? I'd entertain a motion. The request is an additional appropriation to out of mount out of county inmate housing in the amount of three hundred fifty thousand. We make a motion to approve the request. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Scott to approve the additional appropriation request in the amount of three hundred fifty thousand to out of county inmate housing. Are there any other questions from the members? This time I open it up for public comment. Come to the podium and state your name and your address and allow public comment. There's no public comment. Uh, roll call, please. Connor? Yes. Scott? Aye. Hicks? Yes. Perez? Aye. Bowling? Yes. Middlesworth? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And everything this evening was advertised. Yes. So. Okay, uh, the, the next request is um, for a transport, a person to help transport the individuals to and from court. We originally. You had a second additional appropriation for us right now. Which was advertised. Okay, we were already able to meet the needs. I apologize for not getting that oh, to you. So we were able to get that taken care of without having additional appropriation done on that. Okay, I'll stretch that out. Now we did have uh, a request for an additional position on the merit side. Uh, and we decided to keep it consistent with the way we're currently doing things and to, to save the county some money. Uh, we decided to request it on the detention deputy side uh, instead of on the merit side. That will keep it consistent with what we're currently doing. And that's for one position uh, to be able to transport. And we're currently, this in, in the month of May, we transported 124 individuals. Uh, and we only have actually one full-time guy that does that. We also have uh, a special deputy that helps with it. Uh, the problem we run into is he's not always available. We're having to take people from doing other duties uh, to do these transports. Uh, not only do we transport to other facilities, we're transporting juveniles. We also have to transport people to the hospital. And oftentimes, depending on what they're, well, oftentimes for the hospital, the deputy has to stay there with them so that uh, shortens uh, or, or uh, decreases the manpower we have uh, to work uh, in the jail. So what we were looking at doing is creating another position to do transports uh, and to help with those transports since we uh, took on the responsibility of doing the adults also. And then this, and this, let me make sure, this is not a merit position. No, this would be a detention position. Okay, it's a jailer position. Correct. Um, what is the classification in the union? Uh, uh, um, a B, I believe, and you can. A B. 
just to kind of give you an example, today we had two individuals that were having heart issues in the jail that we had to take two people working uh, the jail to sit with them at, uh, at the hospital today. Thank the Lord they both are okay and I'm back with us, but uh, uh, those are things that we run into quite a bit. So the salary, is being, salary that is being requested is that of a deputy, yes. not a jailer. Well, it's not a jailer. 43,762 is what we need instead of the 15. That'd be unit D, which is jailers and corporal it's jailers. 43D. 43762. I think the mayor is 52, 53. Right? That's 56, 57. Okay, yeah, so I guess we need the. Okay, 50s. I know I made this before, but why don't you guys use the retirees? Well, we have been. Most of the retirees are working at, uh, at the courthouse, and we have to make sure we're able to man the courthouse. Uh, so we do use right now, we are using a retired individual, but then that pulls away from the courthouse. Um, and we're trying to get to a position where we don't have to pull from other areas because you just never know. Like today, like I mentioned, we had two individuals we had to sit with at the hospital. Uh, we oftentimes have, uh, within a week's time, at least once or twice a week, we have to transport someone to the hospital and uh, we have to have uh, some stay there with them. Now, there are those cases where if we can get them a lot on a medical, we do try and do that, get the medical condition super bad uh, to where they're going to have to be there for a long period of time and try to get, them, get a judge's permission to get them out. Hey, Mike, um, would it be appropriate if we tabled this item and then let the the union negotiation committee to look over that prior to? I think so. And that's typically how to we go, To go through the con union contract. And yeah. I mean, we can add and take away positions at any time. But I'm just wondering if the council's committee should be to discuss it prior to taking action. Because I mean, it changed from a mayor position to a jailer position. And we have time, so, we, you know, because we mean, still, I mean, we're still good with what we have. We're just looking ahead and trying to prepare ahead. Uh, yeah. So we are able to get those 40 additional uh, moved out. I think it makes sense just contractually make sure we're in <laughs> compliance with where we need to be. Yeah, and what, where it falls in the category. Mm -hmm. I would think so, yes. We're good. Like I said, we're, we're fine with what we have right now. We're just trying to, to plan ahead. Yeah. I think that'd be my recommendation to, to review it prior, at least that. Whatever you guys need from us, let us know and we'll get you the information. Is it okay to ask a question? Yes, go ahead. So if, if this were to be granted, I know it might be kind of difficult, but on a percentage basis, how, how often or like 10% of the time are we going to be needing to pull somebody, you know, because this is going to be their full-time right. job. It should Would this handle like 95%? It should the handle the majority of it. I mean, obviously you can't guarantee what's going to happen. Uh, like I said today, we had two individuals that had to go to the hospital and we still had to do our, our regular transports. And unfortunately, in our profession, uh, you just never know. Uh, but I think it would help us out uh, tremendously to be able to do a full-time spot that that's all they're doing. Uh, and really, sometimes they, you know they may be able to do other things too, but that will be their primary uh, responsibility to do that. So, like, if by chance there would be no transport, whatever reason there's no transport to be done for the day, this person could go into the to help work the jail, jail and and uh, do those things. So. Okay. Yeah, we always want to try to make a multi-purpose, right? So there's more things that you can do more than just one, one thing. So, and that's what. Uh, uh, Foy, uh, Deputy Foy does right now. He's our full-time guy. And just so that you guys know, we actually took that over from the merit spot because we wanted that merit officer on the road to help uh, serve on the road. And it's uh, since we've turned it over to the detention side, they've been doing a phenomenal job uh, scheduling them uh, and, and getting people picked up and taking where they're supposed to. Foy, uh, Deputy Foy is one of our full-time ones right now. Thank you. If you're not in a time crunch, I think tabling it and then okay. bringing it back next meeting would be sufficient. But okay, sounds good to me. We appreciate it. That's the will of the council. Okay. 
motion to entertain a motion. Mr. President, make a motion to table the uh, request by the Grand County Sheriff Del Garcia regarding his uh, transport officer request. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Scott, a second from Mr. Poling to table the request for an additional uh, detention deputy uh, to the next meeting. Are there any other questions, comments from the members? Public input? I think that's an inmate up there banging. It might be. <laughs> uh, roll call, please. Scott? Aye. Poling? Yes. Connor? Yes. Hicks? Yes. Perez? Aye. Middlesbrough? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Sure. Next item under new business, item B, Grant County IT Marcus Elliott with an additional appropriation regarding the County General Fund. Good evening. Oh, good evening, gentlemen. All right, well, I come to you this evening um, uh, for a request. Um, currently, we have a uh, employee that is out on FMLA. And uh, so what we're looking to do um, to help fill the gap is to uh, get an additional migration uh, to help us uh, get some help uh, while that while this person is out. And uh, so basically, I I came up with a, a deal here. So we're looking for an additional appropriation for a new uh, temporary part-time uh, help desk here one for uh, six months. And at a rate of twenty dollars and, and seventy eight cents an hour, and it, with it being part time, it'd be twenty eight hours a week. And uh, in order for us to do that, we would have to have a, uh, an additional appropriation in the amount of fifteen thousand three hundred eight dollars and sixteen cents. Are there any questions from the members? Obviously, the the. The person out on FMLA would be um, given your budget a increase, correct? You would be using all your salary line items, or right? Um, so, with so I talked to Nancy about it. I can tell you the um, the person's FMLA is is supposed. To, I think it's supposed to run up in July. So I don't believe we would need to utilize these funds because basically they would either come back or um, we would, should be able to uh, put, post that job, essentially. Is that employee's FMOA unpaid? I, like, I, I'm not sure if I can answer that. To my, to my knowledge, they're, they're out. I don't understand your answer. There, yeah, it, I mean, I'm not sure if I can take, I, I mean, maybe you know, but I, Well, there's, there's usually FMLA is unpaid, is my understanding. So mm -hmm. I guess my question is if it's unpaid leave that you're trying to replace, mm -hmm. why would it be an additional appropriation well, rather than just pay them that money? Well, my understanding is, is we can't technically touch that position or the money in that position while they're gone. That'd be correct. So um, that's basically why we have to do a separate item for it. So I'm, I'm still a little hazy on the FMLA stuff, but I mean, that's my basic understanding of it. So this take covers you for the six months while that person's out on FMLA. Correct. They're going to make the twenty-two dollars and seventy-eight cents an hour. They're only going to work twenty-eight hours a week, and your request is for the additional appropriation in the amount of fifteen thousand three hundred eight dollars and sixteen cents. But uh, and we thinking it's going to run out in July, which this one ended up being maybe offset itself possibly. Right, and to add another offset to it. Um, I calculated that, you know, with this individual being on, un, you know, unpaid FMLA, you know, there should be um, roughly, uh, I calculated at $9,567.60 in uh, unused funds from our salaries account. 
which is where that gets paid from. So that was something that, that was good towards the, at the end of the year. Are there any questions or comments from the members? It doesn't make any sense just to prorate this for like two months at a time since there's so many uncertainties instead of appropriating a full 15,000. Well, obviously, if he doesn't use it, I mean, just because it's appropriate, don't mean he has to use it. True. I mean, what are your thoughts, Angie? I mean, I, I guess I would just appropriate it and whatever's unused will return right. back to the yeah. county general. Especially with the uncertainty of the ethanol line. Yeah. Are there any other questions from the members? If not, I'd entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the request. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Perez to approve the additional appropriation within the part-time uh, help desk technician at the $22.78 an hour, the 28 hour per week in the amount of $15,308.16 and is that the current rate or is that a salary? That's the same rate that the, the replacement. Okay, so it's a salary right. ordinance amendment then? Yes, it's a salary okay. ordinance amendment. So do you want to do that in the same motion? Yeah, do that including the salary ordinance amendment. <laughs> Any other questions from the members? Angie or? Marcus, maybe you know, is there no other accounts we can transfer from to make this happen? Um, not, not without uh, put me into the red and something else. Any other questions for the members? Public input? And a roll call, please. Connor? Yes. Perez? Aye. Scott? Aye. Hicks? Yes. Lane? Yes. Middlesbrough? Yes. Motion carries. Thanks again, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks, Marcus. Next item under new business, item C, Grant County Circuit Court, Mark Spitzer. Judge Mark Spitzer with a transfer of appropriation within the County General Fund. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. I have two requests um, tonight. Um, the first one is a request for an additional appropriation of $30,000. Um, the purpose of this is for the jury per diem. Um, as you may recall, circuit court has uh, uh, all of the court's um, jury per diem funds, and um, we've been trying a lot of cases. Um, also, the jury pay was increased last year for the first time that I can recall since I've been on the bench. It's my 18th year. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive to pay a jury now than it has been over the last 18 years. And we're trying a lot of cases. And so um, originally appropriated or, or in the budget was $52,000. Um, I'm asking for another 30. I'm not gonna promise you that I won't be back again because um, We've got a, a lot of trials coming up, but for the moment, I'm asking for 30000 as an addition. Did we advertise for the... The request came in after the cutoff, so I explained to you that it would be at the July meeting. So, no, it's not been advertised, nor was it on the agenda. Now, okay. the transfer is, okay. but not the additional, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just right. came in after the cutoff. It was short this time. All right, okay. So we can approve the 2000 from contractual services to jury meals? <laughs> Yeah, so that's the other question. 2000 transfer from contractual jury meals. <clears throat> Do you need me back next meeting for this other request? I won't say, I would say exactly the same thing as I would uh, this meeting at the next meeting. So, I mean, if you want to, what uh, we'd have to suspend our rules, obviously, but uh, I mean, do you want to hear? 
about the thirty thousand. We want to wait till next month. <laughs> I'd be okay with suspending the rules. Next month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go ahead. Let's go ahead and take action on this, and we can go back to that item. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So um, similar situation. We again. Um, uh, the jury meals account has be, been depleted because we have um, lots of juries and they're eating. Um, and so this is just, um, and this one will probably take us through to the end of the year, it looks like. Um, so just $2,000, and that's a transfer from contractual. How many trials you have all the courts have done this year? I can't tell you off the top of my head. Um, uh, quite a few. I'll find a few more. I think I had, I think I've got 43 scheduled for trial on um, a, a week from Monday. So we're hoping to try one of those um, in future weeks or similar. Are there any questions or comments from the members regarding the transfer from contractual services to jury meals in the amount of 2000? But you didn't say that with a whole lot of confidence. You're hoping to try one out of 43. <laughs> so you have them 43 deep? I have 43 deep, yes. Yikes. Yeah, there's, we, well, you have to uh, set um, criminal trials within a, short, a certain period of time and have to dismiss the case. We had a lot of cases. We had, I think I shared with you, we had 1,200 um, felonies that were filed last year, um, which was a record over 1,200, and we're, I looked at the first quarter this year, we're at 296, we're right in line with that. Um, it's a little lower than the first quarter of last year, but higher than the last two quarters. So, um, so and we've got a lot of cases. Um, we have one of the highest caseloads in the state um, per judge. So we're in the top 10 um, per judge caseload. And so um, box them up and try them. Or if there are no other questions, we'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the request to transfer the 2000. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Scott to approve the transfer in the amount of $2,000 from contractual services to jury meals. Are there any other questions from the members? Public input? Uh, roll call, please. Connor? Yes. Scott? Aye. Jakes? Yes. Perez? Aye. Poling? Yes. Middlesbrough? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Now go ahead and inform us on the $30,000. Yeah, and on that, as I uh, indicated, that would be an additional appropriation. And um, that is just, so this is for jury per diem, and so it's what you have to pay a juror for. Um, you, you pay a juror a certain amount for showing up for jury selection, and they get a larger amount if they're selected and seated. Um, and so this is simply what we pay uh, to the jurors. Our typical um, jury panel is uh, 12 and an alternate. Um, the lower level felonies are six and, uh, and an alternate and the civil six as well. But we, most of the ones that we're trying are the higher level felonies. And so it kind of depends on how long a, a case lasts in terms of how, how much per day you have to pay the jurors. But as you can see, we've kind of depleted that fairly quickly. The, uh, um, first part of the year. So, are there any questions? Where could I find those statistics, like the trials? How many trials? Uh, I could probably get them for you if you're interested. Yeah, like yeah. for each court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I or, or if there's a if there's a link or a website, I don't know if you would. Have, I know you can send the statistics to the state. Yeah, it's we'd easier do. for me to go there, you know, instead of you doing it. Right. Yeah, we do. We won't give you anything current for this year. Okay. So um, everything's provisioned for now. Well, you get first quarter, maybe. Um, so, yeah, let me take a look at it. I'll send it to you. All right. Yeah, I can do that. Are there any other questions from the members? I believe that's all. All right. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next item under new business is lit discussion this evening with uh, Mr. Darren Bates. Good evening, sir. Hello. Welcome to the room. We're going to start in the hot. It's 
Go ahead. This is our annual review of the lid tax. Uh, did we get an answer on whether the county council should do a uh, step on their own? I have not received any from the board. Okay. Uh, that's what you wanted to discuss mainly was uh, doing an PSAP. And yeah. so you get an answer from you know, DLGF. The last thing I knew is uh, three months ago, the even in a taxing board county, which you are, uh, the first time you, know, you don't have a PSAP, PSAP is 911 funding to fund uh, all equipment, services, pay, payroll, everything about 911. And the law has been for a decade or more that the county council on the first time can create it. You still got to send it to the taxing board for the, they can acknowledge it, but last thing is, as long as we get approval, you know, you have the right to implement it. Uh, five years ago, there was a limit of 0.2%. Uh, percent. Uh, I don't know if the first time that there is a limit, but when we uh, talked about it outside of here, uh, you didn't even need a 0.2. It was looking at you might need a 0.14 or 0.15, 0.16, somewhere in that range. So I know, um, you know, last year we made a, an error in the advertisement, so the our body's recommendation didn't get voted on with um, creating the PSAP at the point one seven or eight, I believe. And you first, know, I was all intermixed with rearranging right. and doing different things. Correct. So what you have the ability is if you're still having issues with your 911, which sounds like you have been <laughs> since you created, what, seven, eight years ago. Uh, I, I've helped at least in 14 counties with PSAPs. It's the one thing that the public has never, uh, as a 98% approval, they want funding. They want to know when they call 911, they're going to get immediate service. Because uh, in retrospect, my father had a stroke uh, years before you did that, and you were 17 minutes late beyond the limit. But he survived and he was okay. Uh, and I've talked to a few other people in Grant County at that time, and that was a common thing. So that's one of the reasons why you made this uh, 911 center and dissolved all the other three or four that you had. Uh, it's just that you should have at that time created a PSAP to fund it outside of property taxes, that way income taxes have done it. And that's the uh, majority of my counties have done that, the ones that haven't. The irony is, is they're still collecting enough from the uh, landlines, believe it or not. I guess they're big enough or they just haven't got cell phones enough in some of the counties. Rolling Hills of uh, Southern Indiana. <laughs> Cell service isn't the best, so they still have landlines at that point, and they're still making uh, 60 to 80 percent of the money off the landlines. Where you, I think you're 20 or 30 percent the way your numbers ran. So you're needing more money, and you still have, I guess, two years on an interagency agreement with uh, Marion, Gessity, and Jonesboro. The catch was that was a fixed amount eight years ago. And your costs have gone up, so technically you're flipping the difference. So again, you're constantly going down the drain. Uh, so if you were to pass one, one that would nullify and do away with that agreement, because in that agreement you explained to me that uh, if you had a knife of PSAP, then that dissolves and it goes away. But then the PSAP would pay and you would be tapping into your general fund, and general fund is based on property taxes, which is a condition of cap losses. So again, at that point, you have the right, with all we know at this point, you have the right to implement a uh, PSAP on your own. Now, in doing that, you would then increase your income tax rate. But after doing that, then you could, uh, as long as you don't submit it to the state, that's the catch. Do not submit any paperwork to the state uh, if later on you would also address the rearranging of how you're dealing with your lit. Uh, at that point, you can tell the other units, look, we have the right to do a PSAP, but as a taxing board, we 
as a group, have the right to rearrange and take away the credits uh, from property tax relief and utilize it better because you're not even hitting half your money isn't even coming back as revenue uh, on property tax relief. Uh, the people in most of the towns now, uh, the credits they're getting on their bill are going against the cap losses, so they're not benefiting from the income tax, property tax relief. But people outside the city limits, they're getting the money uh, because their rate's not high enough, so they're getting a relief. But they're also paying at that point. The people in the city are paying and not benefiting, so it's not really fair when, like I said, less than about half, a little bit less than half are benefiting. So income tax, the state keeps creating more and more, their words, buckets. Uh, you've got, uh, you've always had economic development, see it, it's money. You have public safety, and a subset of that is PSAP. You've now got EMS for ambulance service. Uh, you've got uh, a correctional facility, jail, uh, uh, lit, uh, and there's one that they're probably going to do away with. It only lasted one year at this point. Was uh, 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 fire volunteer fire district. Uh, it's kind of touchy and nobody understands it, so that's why they're thinking about doing away with it. But the point is, they keep creating more and more ways of paying your bills because they keep saying one, two, three. You can count. You're supposed to have been relying on the circuit breaker caps one, two, and three, not giving credits and bills. And that's why they keep cutting out. We're down to, in my opinion, two methods where uh, 15 years ago we had 12 different ways of giving credits to bills. We're down to two. You can target one, two, or three, and the only one left that you had to change was there was no qualifying res. It was just res, but the first of the year, and then the first year, however you want to look at it, they redefined the res, basically what qualifying res was. Uh, when we had a meeting last year, it was supposed to be just normal homes, no commercial apartments. And at the beginning of the year, they said, oh, no, no, we changed that at the last minute. Now commercial apartments are included in it. So uh, that's why we still did OK on uh, your bringing in revenues from your cap two rentals. Um, now, the catch is that's going to increase uh, this year for next year moving forward because practically anything now in a homestead, it may not be cap one, but it's no longer cap three. Uh, basically, everything's either considered as a home, part of your home, or it could have be a possibility of a rental. <laughs> so you're going to see more cap losses next year in cap twos. Um, and that's about it at that point. Uh, rearrange, I have no figures because, again, we don't know what you want to do. Um, yeah, I guess this is uh, it's just a discussion this, at this point. Yeah, discussion uh, for the members. Is there anything that we would like to look into uh, to have Mr. Bates um, run, the, run the numbers? One of the reasons why a lot of the county that told last year not to do anything, but most of them did anyways, was the state increased the homestead supplemental from 35% to 40%. Next year, they're going to drop it back to 37 and a half, and then the year after that, they'll drop it back to 35, because they're anticipating the assessment on homes is going to flatline now that it jumped, and that's why they jumped it to 40%, on top of the fact that it's in year they Thought they wanted to give a good story to the tax homeowners. Uh, but there's also talk about that they might even extend that uh, and, and uh, um, amend, that was the word I was going to appeal, but amend the supplemental to even 45 or 50%. The biggest problem is it's 60% uh, up to that 48,000 because they moved the mortgage of 3,000. They got rid of mortgage, but they increased the homestead from 45 to 48. The problem is people that have, say, $50,000, $60,000 home, they've lost the mortgage because 60% of $50,000 only $30,000 deduction. And so they don't benefit. So unless you have an $80,000 home, the poor got cheated. And if they raise it again uh, to, you know, 
you know, uh, 45 or 50 percent, then the poor will benefit at that point, uh, only because the percentage can increase. But now all the expensive homes also get an addition at that point. Now you have, uh, again, it affected your county by roughly four million net tax dollars times your rate countywide. If they jump it from 40 to 45 or 50, you know, we'd be looking at you know eight or ten million dollars. Uh, uh, and, and yours is 25 percent of that, uh, um, one and a half percent, you know, times. $10 million in that AV. So the bottom line is every time you turn around, they keep knocking you down a way that you're generating revenue. And that's one of the reasons why if you contact anyone from the DLGF, they're going to look at you and say, well, look, you still get credits and bills. We don't care that you're having problems. So I, I've helped at least four of the counties eliminate. You know, it's a process. It's a two or even three year uh, Scaling down, you know, uh, Huntington, uh, I think uh, five, eight years ago, they had a half percent and it took us three years to chop it from, you know, 0.5 to 0.3 to 0.15 that's gone. Uh, and Washington was 0.25, they went, you know, down. So you're one percent, which is, uh, there's only two other counties that have a one percent. Most of them have a quarter, as high as three quarters. You're about the only. The, you're one of three counties that have a 1% credit back to tax bills. You are not maxed out when it comes to rate. Your rate, current rate is 2.55, but the state says, no, your real tax rate is 1.55. You're given 1% to uh, credits, to bills. We don't consider that part of the tax rate. You can actually have a 2.5% rate. So you're, you know, uh, 0.95 away, so you're PSAP is easy enough to put in there. And I'm not trying to get you to increase uh, your rates. I've never had any county that I've held to increase. As long as you give credits and bills, you should be eliminating that, rearranging, and put it down to where you pay your bills. Because any lift that pays a bill is 100% captured, where right now, like I said, you're not even, you're bringing in $14 million in credits and you're only utilizing seven of it, roughly. It comes in as revenue. The other seven just lowers people's bills out in the county. So it's just something to think about. And uh, you got my uh, email address and my phone number. Never hesitate to call. I take calls from county council members all the time. Are there any questions from the members or any rearranging? Any of the members would like to see? So you're saying if you increase, you say 0.14. Okay. So 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 if you implement PSAP at 0.14, you can rearrange later by that same amount. Yes. And as long as you don't submit it to the state, right. it's just a you know you put it in, and at that point you're. We talked about your. I heard you earlier about suspending rules. You got the. You have a condition locally here that the first time around has to be 100. percent You spend the rule. Because yeah, the longer you wait, then you're on a time crunch. Because you want to get the piece up out of the way, then you want to talk about rearranging. Because then you're going to sit down on the taxi board. You got to give them the two to three, four weeks, and notification. You got to give them the paper. So the bottom line is, you would technically, if you passed it, your 2.55 would be 2.69. But then the next meeting, you can say, okay, now we're going to uh, vote on let's move this amount out of credits of the 0.14, instead of 1%, now you're down to 0.86. And therefore, you put your rate back to 2.55. Now, it doesn't mean you can't lower, suggest lower it more and do uh, EMS or a uh, correctional facility, or just lower it like Mr. Connor has tried it uh, for almost a decade, trying to lower income taxes. So if, if that was to happen, then that readjustment would have to be approved by the tax council. That's the catch, is outside of PSAP, the first time on a PSAP, uh, if nothing's changed, you have the right to do it. But everything else, there is not one other lift that you have to send to the taxing board for approval. So the bottom line is if you implement and need the PSAP, uh, one, it frees up your general fund, 
which should also freeze up uh, gas cities in Marion and Jonesboro general fund because they wouldn't be paying you anymore starting next year. Uh, but if you pass then to pull away that 0.14 from the, the credits, but the taxing board doesn't, then it's not your fault. You, you, you at least put it out there for them to try to approve. No, um, we still have the 0.14. But then you still tax. increase your income tax, yes. Yeah, I think it would have passed last year's if uh, the advertisement wasn't wrong, in my belief. But uh, we've tried it a couple times now, and there's always some caveat where we miss or. or a little dot you know. crossing the T's. I know, I spoke at the Marion Council before all that, and they were fine. Majority wise, they were fine. A couple of them didn't like yeah. the elimination of economic development uh, point oh one. But overall, it, it, that was such a minuscule amount. They said it, it was important to do it. Yeah. But like I said, uh, you can circumvent that just by implementing it. And at that point, it just forces their hand. Well, we were going to pass last year, but you messed up on paper. So more likely. But at that point, you still maybe should be looking at, again, rearranging. And I can do numbers to say, OK, do we want to keep X amount to cap one? Or should we be moving more to cap two? Or maybe not cap. Uh, res because rentals again it keeps increasing maybe cap two as a whole because you're farmers you know you are a good farming community uh, you know I, I've got counties that have almost no farming but I got other counties that are 90 percent farming uh, the bottom line is farming farmland has uh, just been going skyrocketing in the last three years mostly and I believe they have still one more year of jacking the numbers up again so when you don't give it, the only way a farmer gets any credits is to give it cap two. Cap a uh, res is not anything about farming. It's not anything about uh, your long-term uh, care, your, your nursing home. So I'd rather not have the assumption from the other government entities that they would. I'd rather get something from them being in support of the readjustment if possible. Uh, again, it's up to you whether you put it in as an individual uh, and, and do it because the law still allows it, or you just throw it in as uh, uh, rearranging. And one of the things you want to do is you create a piece out. All right, just throw out the what is available to you to let you make your decision. Give us the flyover of the point five for the correction over you have. Oh, uh, last thing, uh, what I got with the state, the, uh, it was not the normal point two that you can do as a council. It is a special legislation, but at the last minute they passed after, the first one was that you as a county council could have done on your own. Then they got a bill right after that, not even two weeks later, that then canceled that and says it has to go back to the taxing board. So you can't even do it without all the taxing board approving it. Uh, what I tell most counties is, you know, uh, whatever the maximum is, you go for the maximum. Uh, if it's the normal one, I wouldn't have maxed it out, but this one, the uh, nuance of the law of the point five was once everything's paid off. Now, Grant, you don't have a budget, but whatever you do decide on a budget, once it's paid off, that point five goes away. It is no longer an option to uh, submit to the county taxing board of that 0.5. So Mr. Connor would like that in that if you actually were to pass a 0.5 and then rearrange the lift from one down to 0.5 and the taxing board approved it, say you only did a jail for, for argument say 50 million uh, and it was paid off in eight years, the law says, oh, once the bonds, once whatever reason you got that. Once all bills are paid, that lid goes away, and therefore the taxing board has no say in it. It just you can't reallocate. You can't move to something else. It just goes away. That was one of the nice thing about the point five special legislation for you, uh, and that's why I said is the point five is just pays it off sooner if you go with a smaller amount. But if you go with some of the numbers like, then you would max out the twenty five years. So uh, I have no. Opinion one way or the other that 
Um, from the sounds in my head, the numbers your share was saying, you'd be looking at 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars uh, a year somehow to be paying at $40 a day to ship your uh, inmates out. As you keep finding out that everything you get up there, you bring it down to the 220, it's not like you really like to be at. Next you know, you're back at the 260 or 280, then you're shipping more out. So instead of 103, it's 120, it's 150. Time goes on, you're going to keep putting them out there. But that's why I said it's looked like you know 1.2 to 1.5. The question is, is a jail going to cost you more than that? Uh, to uh, Mike's comment the other day, the more I found out, as long as they don't jack the forty dollars up, you're right. Uh, some of the counties I talked to, they said, "Holy cow, we wish we could have got. We've never built a jail. We got forty dollars a day because they were almost twice that." Then again, the sheriff pointed out that all you can send out is your healthy, uh, nice ones. <laughs> so you got a, a challenge here. You know, your, your county is so diversified in every aspect, not just the jail, but uh, what I, if I try to help you with rearranging lit, uh, Marion loves lit towards commercial, a part, uh, commercial structures, CAT 3, where Gas City doesn't need CAT 3. What they need is CAT 1 and 2, homes and, and, and rentals. Uh, mostly homes over there. There's very few rentals. Uh, so it's a balancing act with seven units of government in towns, cities and towns. And that's why I said the, the ultimate way is, is trying to eliminate the credits altogether and just put it into the different buckets of paying bills. Like I said, again, everything I've been learning talking with senators and House of Representatives the last three years, they're looking to eliminate the credits, and what you don't want is one year to say, oh, 1 percent's gone. That's why I've told other counties they should be trying to wean it down, because could you just imagine, you know, no credits, and now you're up $7 million out of your bottom line of revenue because you didn't anticipate it. So, again, that's something you should be trying to look beyond, you know, just two or three years in the future at that point. Any other questions from the members? Anything you'd like to see for the next meeting? Or? No. Leave that's all. all if right. there is something that comes up, we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks, Darren. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item E, compliance with the statement of benefits, the Dunham uh, Corporation, the CF1. with statement of benefits for the real estate improvements and it's for the Dunham Athleisure Corporation located at 255 South 600 East Marion Indiana 46953 I believe they've fulfilled all the requirements as in years past I just need a motion to accept their, their uh, CF1 so moved second I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Scott to accept Dunham's Athleisure Corporation's uh, form CF1. Are there any other questions from the members? Public input? Uh, roll call, please. Connor? Yes. Scott? Aye. Yes. yes. Perez? Aye. Polling? Yes. Middlesbrough? Yes. Motion carries. Next item under new business is item F, um, rainy day fund discussion. Um, I would kind of like to change uh, that topic to maybe a budget resolution um, stating any additional spending within contractual services has to come before the council. Mr. Glickfield, what are your thoughts on, um, on that? As far as as far as what we discussed in executive session, is that through a resolution or the and I guess I'm going to open it up for discussion regarding that topic. As far as 
the issue of having a resolution to limit to a certain dollar amount? Correct. Yeah, limit the any additional appropriations to a certain dollar amount. I think that certainly could be done by resolution. Um, I think you know, you got a couple issues. First issue is, is it all encompassing or are you going to have exclusions? And then the second issue is, is there a limit on um, a certain dollar amount that you want to say above this amount, this is what it needs to be. If I remember correctly, I think those are the two things that we, that are need public discussion and council debate on. Is there a dollar amount that the member would be satisfied with? So the resolution would say that uh, anything over ten thousand dollars, excluding some of the offices, right? Correct. Obviously, um, that anything over ten thousand that's currently not been paid, then would come back for an additional appropriation to this body. Is that correct? Maybe anybody else for this lower or higher? So existing contracts or new contracts? New contracts. Okay. Correct. Of new contracts. New contracts, right. And you could have that for the next meeting. Yes. And I'll get a, uh, I want to get a sample draft out and to everyone within yeah, the why, next couple of weeks. Why don't we have uh, the president, vice president, and maybe one of the council members talk about any exclusions? Uh, yeah. Or, but if it's a new contract, I don't think we need it. It should be an issue, yeah. So, I don't know. You're right. I don't think we need it if it's a new contract. Yeah, I don't think we need it if it's a new contract. Do we even need the dollar amount at that point? Probably not, because we'd want to see any of the new contracts. Yeah. Would that be correct? Yeah. I agree. And yeah. these are ones that would require an appropriation, not a transfer. That's a good question. I mean, I think probably both. Yeah. Appropriation or transfer. Okay. Yes. Any other questions or comments? To be the appropriation or transfer that is resulting in a new contract. Would come before this body for approval. So just to summarize, just to make sure we're all on the same page, we're I'm going to draft the resolution says any new contracts that require appropriation or transfer need to be submitted to the council for approval. That's the general synopsis of what we're doing, correct? Correct. Okay. Should we add to be funded? Because again, we can't, sure, we sure, can't sure. prohibit yeah. contracts, but we can essentially refuse to fund them. Okay. I'll get that taken care of. If there's other questions, we'll move on. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Uh, I add um, <clears throat> contracts for services. What was that, Mr. Rod Lake? The attorney contract. I guess what we just covered. Okay. The, do we need a, item H, attorney contract? No, no, no. no unless that's the pair. No, no, the no. contract for services, number G is the contract for services with Mr. McWork. Okay, I didn't see that. That we're going to enter in with, again, a 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the council's going to enter again a contract uh, with Mr. McCourt to do some various budget items. The commissioners did approve the signing of that contract, and I wanted this body to make a formal uh, motion in a second, accept the contract. Um, it's a little less than last year. It's $5,000. It'll be paid out of the council's budget. Uh, it gives us a second uh, set of eyes uh, looking over the budget stuff. Um, Angie, do you have anything else you want to add? No. Your responsibilities are the same as last same, year. Yeah. Same as last year. There's yeah. already a written contract there that is. could be used. There is. We he submitted it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I believe Meeks and Mr. Percy uh, reviewed yes. it. Okay, okay perfect. Yep. Is there a motion? So moved. Sorry. I have a motion from Mr. Poling, a second from Mr. Scott to approve the contract with Mr. McCord for services in the amount of $5,000 uh, for the budgetary process. Any other questions from the members? Public input? A roll call, please. Poling? Yes. Scott? Aye. Connor? No. Hicks? Yes. Perez? Aye. Middlesbrough? Yes. Motion carries. Um, we'll move on to item H, attorney contract. Uh, we need to accept Mr. Meeks's resignation. You want to go ahead and speak Yeah, on? so Nathan Meeks, my partner, as you all know, ran for judge in one. He has a very heavy day-to-day -day caseload, and he's got to try to weed that. Is he room for judge? I, I, did, I missed that. <laughs> Is he trying or anything? It was hard. I mean, I can see how you say that, Mike. Yeah. I was busy. It's not there whether it wasn't a sign on every corner of the county or a billboard. But anyway, I digress. He um, wants to focus on winding up his caseload. He knew there were some potentially... Uh, larger issues coming up, which might require some time. So he wanted to basically resign his position for the contract that you have in place. I would then step in and fulfill his obligations, which I'm more than happy to do. And uh, Nathan would then wind down his caseload. He, he really wants to be done by the end of October anyway, because he has to go to judge's school and that sort of thing towards the end of the year. So the current contract covers uh, Mr. Yeah, Blackfield covers, covers this in. year, and we certainly can address that then at the beginning of the year with the new council. I think all we need to do this evening is just take action and accept um, his, re his yeah, resignation. Accept his resignation, and then um, assuming it's okay, then I would finish no. the term of the contract. The contract wasn't with Nathan, it was with the firm, right? I'm sorry? The contract wasn't with Nathan, it was with the firm. Yes, correct. So yeah, and there was language in there which yeah. specifically stated if he could. I make a motion to accept Mr. Meek's resignation with appreciation for his service and to approve Mr. Glickfield pursuant to the contract fulfilling the duties of our attorney for the remainder of the year. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Scott to accept Mr. Meek's resignation and. Uh, Appoint uh, Mr. Glickfield as the attorney for the council for the remainder of the year per the contract. Any other questions or comments from the members? Public input? Gene, I want to say I've enjoyed working with David as an EPC. Uh, yeah, if you want. Please, you? Yeah, come up to the podium if you would. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm Randy Atkins, president of APC, and just want to state that I enjoyed working with David. He's done a great job for the APC, and highly recommend it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? He's a pretty good guy. You just have to watch him on golf on the scores. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other comments or public comment. I entertain a uh, roll call, I guess, yeah. Connor. Yes. Scott. Aye. Hicks. Yes. Perez. Yes. Colin. Yes. Middlesbrough. Yes. I believe that concludes the new business. We don't have any old business. Um, committee reports. <laughs> Mr. Scott. Yes. 
John Healy committee reports no, from this point. Good. Anyone else? Committee reports? Our next regular meeting is Wednesday, July the 17th, 2024. However, we do have a special joint session July the 10th. Is that correct? At 6 p.m. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't put that on the video. That's a joint session with the commissioners July the 10th at 6 p.m. And you should have received a calendar invite from Mr. Sadoff. Oh, I have a question about that. I've had a couple of constituents ask how they get on the agenda for that special meeting to speak to the ARPA spending. Um, as how far do we do that? As far as I know, the commissioners are handling the agenda. So I think through Mr. Sadoff or uh, Mr. Stewart to the commissioners. That's exactly what I told them. I just wanted to make sure that yep. I told yep. them right. Okay, thank you. Um, Did you want to have the representative from there come to that meeting also? I think that'd be fine. With, uh, is that the, what the council wants? I think that'd be good. Okay. Good to hear you. Very good. Um, why don't you shoot Justin an email and have him add that to the agenda? I'm sorry. I was telling Angie if she'd shoot Justin an email, have that added to the agenda. Okay, perfect. That way it's on the agenda for discussion. The beard contractor. What time is that meeting? At 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Okay. At this time, I'll open it up for public comment. Uh, come to the podium, state your name and your address, and I'll allow him. What do you want? Eddie Hartman. Two minutes. Fairmount, Indiana. Uh, to make you aware of a situation that uh, we have in the county and it involves the recorder's office. I'll give you some letters here. I sent a letter to the recorder's office requesting um, a public access request for some records and they were for leases signed for greater than three years and greater than 10 acres. And uh, so anyway, uh, I got a letter back then from Kyle Persinger, and uh, he said that they would basically have the information by January 26, 2023, which he meant 2024, since that was mailed in December of 23. Could we just type up? Anyway, then uh, <clears throat> I, there was another letter that came on January 23rd, three days before the information was due, saying the recorder won't be doing it, basically, because it was too burdensome of a request, and it would interfere with the regular discharge the functions of the duties of the Grant County Recorder. Um, I then sent another letter back saying that I was surprised that the request would not be completed on time. The recorders had now two months to complete this request, which was not including an extreme number of records. The recorder's office was operating according to state code. It would have been a simple matter for them to comply with this request. And I cited state code IC 3231 2-1, necessity of recording. The first sentence doesn't apply because it's for transportation leases, but the next section B does. Not more than 45 days after its execution, a lease of real estate for a period longer than three years shall be recorded in the miscellaneous record in the recorder's office of the county in which the real estate is located. Their failure to properly record the leases needs to be corrected by them and they should not let this go any further. If they were to contact their software provider, 
provider, they may instruct them how to accomplish the miscellaneous record set up. Uh, this reply that this request for records is too burdensome is an embarrassment for the county, and this response from them is unacceptable. Uh, it's really not that many records to look for, but volunteers went up and actually searched the public computer up there. Spent one lady spent over a week daily going up there and found quite a few records. Another man spent a day and found an additional one that had been missed. We don't know how many have been missed, but this would be an easy matter to go up and pull them from the miscellaneous file if they'd been recorded correctly, put in there, which they were back when wind farms were trying to come into Grant County. It was easy for someone to go up and pull them all. <laughs> right away and just get them a copy. So this has been kind of an obstruction to getting that task accomplished. The public really has a right to know. So I think they still need to fulfill that. And uh, I think you gentlemen have a little bit of power over them. In the coming budget, they may not need a salary increase until they improve their performance. That would be my recommendation anyway. Thank you. Thank you for hearing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any other public comment? Yeah. Uh, I sent everybody an email today, or at least five members of her own. Go ahead. The Just website, did you get that? Go ahead and state your name for the... Oh, Todd Glancy from Fairmount. Thank you. Did yes, I, the, yes, I received okay. your email. I want to make sure it went yeah. through because I tried to go through the county council email address before, and then I talked to IT because it did not function, and then I could not find it today. So, yep, no, just I received check and make sure that that works, and that's still and that's an appropriate way to bring uh, things to your attention, right? Correct. Okay, so I just want to publicly come out and tell you that I've made this uh, property tax appeal based on there's no plan for the solar and that affects you because that could bring you know your tax base down um, and the last thing that you know the county really wants is a you know, class action lawsuit um, with that uh, and so I just want to come up here put a face with the email and if you have any other questions do you want to direct me um, you know, on here, or you know, send me an email with any comments or questions. But I want to pursue this to see where that leads. Basically, I'm trying to, you know, um, get a plan out, and then that go, that really comes down to the commissioners and the area planning commission, right? As far as where a plan comes from. Those are the yes. places where the plan should should come from. And I'm trying to give everybody a hand, right? So that, that's my comment. Okay, thank you. All right, and then to Ed's piece here, that was really surprising um, and interesting because I talked to the reporter a week or so ago. And so there is a, they have a line item budget, if I'm not mistaken, on digitizing their records. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, just want to check that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May not be able to find the record if they're not in the right folder. Any other public comment? I believe that's all we have. Meeting adjourned.